For a long time I've wanted to have background music as a regular feature of my videos and I want to do it myself but clearly my regular music isn't exactly appropriate. And I don't want to use stock music, someone else's creation, I want to build something myself but not create a new song every time but also not just use the same song every time. What I would like is the same bass song with some random elements, but the problem is when the version is generated at random, you can never get that specific version back to be played again. And this is like the song Maybe Melodies, the tutorial song that comes included with Renoise. Makes use of the maybe y command and it uses random chants for deciding when a note is played or to randomly select from a bunch of notes and choosing which of those should be played. Now the way this works is that it's engineered within the song so that lots of these random differences coming together, it's not actually that crucial when they build up into how the song sounds and how it plays out. But for what I want, which is something more complex and where the random elements would have much stronger changes to the music, you need to be able to replicate an instance of the playback exactly. Now, it's actually possible to do this by building into a song certain elements that can be procedurally generated and affected by a seed number. That way, when you use the same seed number again, then everything still plays out in the exact same way, even though the generation of the elements does occur at random. This is something you might be familiar with in games, procedural generation. It's a bit of a buzzword there. Stuff like No Man's Sky or Factorio use it, or even going back to something like Rogue. And in Renoise itself, there is also the random number generator within Lua in tools and the formula device. Uh, you can make use of the math.randomseed, which makes the random number generator spit out its numbers in a replicable sequence. So, since I want to build this concept up and eventually use it to create music for videos, then it'd be good to test the concept by redoing something like the Maybe Melodies song by using song seeding and procedural generation instead of having it fully random as it is in the song. And this song is actually an ideal test subject because the notes of the different tracks are randomly activated in a variety of different ways but there is really only one pattern and as you can see they are basically just aliases in the other patterns of the first pattern. So I only have that first pattern to actually contend with. Now there's lots of ways of potentially setting this up so that it always comes down to a repeatable sequence of values. But I think for this first video, uh, it'd be best to make use of the stepper device in the modulation section so that I can directly address the playing of the samples themselves. You can either have the volume domain turned on or off. So let's start creating this, starting with the first instrument, track one, the kick sample. Every 16 lines, there's a definite playing of the sample. Meanwhile, in between, all the way down the pattern, it makes use of Y8, which is a 50% chance of triggering that sample. Now, I think the best way to go about this would be to duplicate the sample and duplicate the modulation set that it uses and go into the key zones and set this up to be C sharp. And bring that down to be C. Now we can go in and use C sharp. 
and remove the probabilities. Then oops, copy and paste. Okay, now we need to put in that stepper device. And I want to make it a longer version, 256 steps, which is the maximum amount. But I'm going to make use of the scripting terminal and editor here, because otherwise we're going to be here all bloody day. If I want to do this every time for every sample that I want to make a stepper device of this length for. Now, I don't want to make an actual tool. I don't want any external dependencies. It'd be too easy to, well, you know what I mean. You would program something very specific to do a specific task. But what I want instead is to have this work natively within Renoise and all the constraints that come with that. So that you can then just uh, share the song file and then give the song seed number. And then it would work identically for someone else. So this is just to make things easier here. And it will create, with a 50% probability, 256 steps. Now, this is going to fail here because the envelope devices, because this is an older song, they need to be upgraded. And might as well upgrade the filters as well and make sure I do it for the actual set here. Now, this will insert the volume stepper. There we go, 50% probability for each step. Now, what we want is for the song seed to be attached to this. And for that, we need the macros attached to uh, the reset button. Now, this will allow the dial to change where the volume stepper will start at. And to connect this, we need the instrument macros device. And let's put this in the master track, a Hydra device. Put this at start. And we'll connect this to that instrument macros. There we go. Now this is the song seed number. Anything we connect to here, and there can be lots of them, this will control what the start point will be for anything that you connect this to. I'll just rename this seed number, and there we go. So I did the same thing for the subtrack, wherever there was a probability, and replaced it in the same way. Now when it comes to the hat track though, we have an additional problem, which is that the probabilities are different, either higher or lower than 50%. So I have a slightly upgraded script here. We can put in the chance we need and everything will be taken care of automatically when creating the steppers. Now, there are three different versions, which means that we need three different notes and then three different versions of the stepper device. And that's easy enough. But we also have an additional problem, which is the re-triggers. If you watched the previous video on velocity re-triggering, or if you watched on the official Renoise channel, the effect commands addendum video, you'll know that the retrigger commands don't just repeat the waveforms, they'll retrigger brand new notes. And that's a bit of a problem for the modulation section because that will trigger the stepper to move on to new steps. So it cannot just be randomly done in the way that we've done before. What we need to find out is how many steps 
each of these retriggers takes and then make all the steps in a row that it would take happen together either as a zero or a one as selected at random by the code. Now there is a problem here which is that the R52 occurs six times as opposed to the other re-triggers which occur twice or four times. Now six won't go evenly into those nor into 256 steps. So I'm going to have to change that to R53 like the other one down there. Not a massive change, not something I wanted to do, but it's necessary here and we also have the additional restriction in the Hydra, in the master track, which is that the seed number is going to have to be a multiple of four. Otherwise the steps could be started in the middle of that sequence. Again, not something I really wanted, but this is just a restriction for this first part where we're keeping everything using the same technique. In later parts of this series, I'll be using the formula device to get around restrictions like this by doing something more complex. Anyway, I went through the other tracks and did what I needed to to get them to work, leading up to the pad section here. The mids and high tracks, they use the Y00 maybe command to play one and only one of the note columns. I did what I needed to for the mid section and left the high here as a demonstration, which we'll see now in the sampler. I've already set up the key zones and just need to go into the modulation section and use a new version of the script. We go through the three necessary sample modulation sets, go through one step at a time for the stepper and select one of those sample modulation sets to be turned on. The other two at the same time will be turned off so that it replicates the Y00 maybe command. And there we go. And so finally, we're at the last instrument, the Glock. Uh, if we take a look in the phrases here, it seems like there's a lot going on, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, first, there's four possible notes selected at random using the Y00 maybe command, and then there's three, and then it's just those same notes all the way down. To replicate this, what I need to do was create in key map mode, three separate phrases and in the key zones and as you can see in the samples for every single possible note I've created a different version that will be triggered and they each have their own separate modulation set with their own version of the volume stepper which does uh, one of four excluding the others when one is on and then one and three doing the same Now there was something that I needed to exclude, which is when it has a possibility of going backwards here, then forwards again, and then backwards again. It's not a massive change, because if we look in the original again, each column just goes back through the same note within each column anyway. And there's slight differences in the volume, and of course the timing would be different if there's a possibility of going backwards, then forwards, then backwards again. Not a massive change, not something I want to make again, but necessary because otherwise it's not actually possible to do this just using the stepper in the modulation section. And so with the Glock instrument replaced, we can now move on to the final thing necessary to make all of this work. And that's right at the start of the song. There is needed a very short pattern of just two lines. And there we need to reset the seed number and this will ensure that it starts at zero zero every single time the song is played. <laughs> 